is already predetermined that doesn't necessarily have to hit us, hit America, hit the church, but because he can't find one to stand in the gap. But we got, I forgot how many millions of people confessing to be Christians. Are y'all following me? Yeah. So he had to allow the predetermined judgment to hit them because nobody stopped to reverse it. How much stuff you just embracing because you won't reverse it? You nursing it and rehearsing it instead of cursing it and reversing it. Okay, let me keep it going here. And so many times God is trying to get somebody to carry the burden of the Lord, but they won't yield to it. I believe that probably the majority of the stuff that happens doesn't necessarily have to happen. But because the people are too lazy to get the burden of the Lord to begin to intercede. I, I don't think this thing is it should be as hard as what we make it. Oh, it's just hard, you know. It's just hard to, to get loved ones to come to church. Yeah, you keep on inviting them. The, the Bible says compel them to come. That means everything short of grabbing them by the head and dragging them. I don't think compel means keep invite. I think you got to get on your knees and begin to feel the burden for that thing and begin to seek God that that thing shift. Yes. Yes. When the invite is not enough, then you got to take it to another level. Yes. You got to begin to get burdened with that thing. And some things, sometimes people want to come, but there's so many strongholds over their life that you got to go into warfare to break that off of them. And the reason why most of the church people is not grieved or concerned about this mess, this fiasco that took place Sunday, is because most of the church people are still fellowshipping with Belial. Most of them still sitting in, in the den of demons, still being entertained by... See, this is the thing. You can't challenge something that you're connected to. And in order for me to challenge darkness, I can't still be playing with darkness. Come on, Pastor. And so a lot of people will not address it because they're in it. You can't address Beyonce and Jay-Z because you listen to them. They're in your iPod. They're in your CD player in your car. You can't address something that you're still being entertained by. And you can't address homosexuality when you got them playing your keyboard, when they're directing your choir, when they're on your usher board. How you going to address something that you're still connected to? This thing is about spiritual warfare. And in order for you to be able to confront this stuff head on, you got to come out of it, get consecrated, get anointed, and then you'll be a threat to the enemy's head. But you can't be a threat when you're a part of it. Come on now. Amen. And he's looking for somebody. How you going to address this worldly stuff when you're still listening to worldly music? You can't do it because there's a seed in you. Everything is a seed. Every song is a seed. Well, they ain't worshiping the devil, but they're not worshiping God. It's a seed. And when you try to confront the enemy, there's no authority because there are too many little seeds that's in you. He said he sought for a man. Why couldn't the people stand in the gap? Because they was too engrossed in, in, in the heathen worship, the practices of the people, the culture, being relevant. Sagging when they should have had robes on. Yeah. Earrings in their ear, trying to look cool to reach the culture. And the only thing that's going to get to the culture is the anointing. And the anointing don't come from compromising. The anointing come from pulling out of something and setting yourself apart to God so you can confront the thing that he pulled you out of. Yes. So tired of people trying to be cool and be relevant and, and we got to reach them. He never said reach them. The only reason I need to reach is when I don't have an anointing to pull out. Jews say pull them out of the fight. Snatch them out of the fight. You can't snatch people out of something that you're partaking of. Are you getting anything out of it? I'm just introducing. I haven't even started the message. One of the things that grieves me so sacred is to hear people play, but they can't produce the anointing. Sound like a bunch of noise. Have lovely voices, skilled, but have no anointing. So it's almost like sitting in a concert. You were very entertaining. 
but you've never experienced God in that atmosphere. And the reason why a lot of our musicians, I ain't call them minstrels because it's a difference, a lot of our singers, they cannot produce the glory of God because they're vacillating in and out of the world. They just listened to Beyonce before they came into the church. And now they're trying to issue you into the presence of God. And they got an Illuminati, satanic, demonic spirit on them. And you're wondering why you never really felt the presence of God around these people. It's because they, they really haven't sold out to God. And you can't do both. See, there was, a, there was a burden for minstrels, there was a burden for psalmists to, to get in the presence of God and, and come out with that burden, and they had the responsibility or the burden of producing the presence of God. Yeah. Well, you can't produce his presence when you done lay down with everything else. Yeah. And so the church, a good portion of the church is powerless and in the days. And we're wondering why it's not working. Mm -hmm. We're shaking ourselves like Samson and wondering why it's not working. And we just got out of the bed of Delilah. Dainty things. We've been lured to sleep by everything. Nobody stayed awake to pray. Nobody tarried. He said, could you not tarry for one hour? I could do a whole teaching on that one's phrase. The church is asleep when the devil is creeping. That hour was not indicative of 60 minutes our time. It was, can you not pray till the situation is dealt with? Can, old mothers used to say, pray through, baby. Y'all ever heard that, pray through? What were they talking about? They were talking about pray through the midnight hour. They were saying, pray until the situation is dealt with. Breakthrough. It's not broken because you said something. It's broken when it's broken. But you can't break something when you're connected to it. That's like trying to take antibodies, but you're still taking, infecting yourself with the disease. The antidote don't work if you keep letting the snake bite you. Go to Isaiah. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Why is it not working? Isaiah 59 14. Can you have it? Anybody got it besides members of the man? Thank you. It says, justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the streets and uprightness cannot enter. All, all this is, is a depiction of, of, of righteousness and judgment trying to get in a legal system. This is like a, a court system God is talking about. He's talking about, about life, but he, he's, he's referencing to like a court system. And he was saying, what's going on in, in the court? He said, this is what's going on. Justice is turned back. There's no justice. And righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the streets. And uprightness cannot enter. 15. Yes, truth is lacking. And he who turns aside from evil makes himself pray. Is that not what's going on? Yeah. When you turn away from the world system and what a lot of church people say is okay, you become the prey. Yeah. Now you're the villain. Now you're the one that is open for attack. Yeah. God say the people that's turning from evil get an attack. Why? Because there are a whole lot of people still doing evil. Yeah. He makes himself the prey. Now the Lord saw and it was displeasing in his sight that there was no justice. Say no justice. no justice. And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness upheld him. He was upset that nobody would intercede. Here we go again. 
Another picture where God is looking for somebody to intercede, to come between judgment and come between the nation, and not one person was there to intercede. Because they were too busy becoming part of the culture. They were too busy becoming politically correct. See, you can't play with the world and then get God's bird. Well, it don't take all that. You know, I'm beginning to get a better understanding of this. Be as gentle as a dove, but wise as a serpent. Know what you're talking about, but don't try to push it down nobody's throat. Because if you can't line up with the word, then on that getting up morning, we'll see who in heaven and who ain't. I, I'm not, it's not my job to convince you. Because this is the thing. One day we're going to know who was right and who was wrong. So for those that have loosened the parameters and say it doesn't take all that, one day, one day we all going to stand before God and we all are going to give account of what we did in the body. Now, believers are going to stand before the beamer seat of Christ. We're not going to be judged for for wickedness because we received Jesus that's under the blood. We're going to be judged based on what we did with Jesus. <laughs> the great white throne judgment is when the unbeliever is going to be judged for not receiving Jesus. We, we talk about grace and the providence of God. That's simply grace to let your lazy tail in heaven and you ain't done nothing. When, when, when we have the the award ceremony and other saints are getting their crowns tripped out and getting rewards and you're going to have a blank crown because you didn't do nothing. That's grace. When he said, mm, 